Are you ready for football season? Yes, you heard right. The NFL kicks off in less than 50 days, and Wager Talk and Gold Sheet have you covered with the new Gold Sheet NFL Summer Guide. The Gold Sheet NFL Summer Guide is over 80 pages of actionable NFL handicapping information to help you prep for this season from a betting perspective, and best of all, the guide is free. This includes lines for every NFL game, schedule with Ralph Michaels exclusive power ratings, position by position breakdown with every NFL player that made a start last season, exclusive NFL health reports for each team and much more. Just go to the gold sheet com and the guide is available on the front page with no sign up or information needed. We are back live right here on Wager Talk TV, June 23rd. I'm Andrew McGinnis, joined by Carmine Bianco and Lawrence Presman today in his usual Wednesday spot. Uh, great game to talk about today, guys. A bounce back game for the New York Islanders. At least they're going to try to after absolute domination from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Carmine, I'll go to you, man. How was your night last night? Because I know I had a pretty good night. Yeah, you know why, Andrew? It's funny because I got you and Prez on and I'm, and I'm absolutely excited about the fact that you two are on because I don't have to talk too much about this game. I didn't watch the game last night. I uh, I told you after a long day of soccer and then just putting together a bunch of different scenarios and stuff for the next couple of days, uh, I spent the night watching this Netflix series uh, with my wife called uh, Manifest, which I'm absolutely um, just stuck in watching. Uh, I just can't stop watching this thing. So uh, but with that said, my phone was lighting up because you and Prez were uh, going at it in the, our text message group. So I knew something was happening, and then I checked the score, and I knew exactly what was happening. So kudos to your <laughs> Montreal Canadiens and the Buster Montreal Canadiens. Um, they're definitely not playing with house money. Uh, they're up 3-2 in this series, and, uh, and uh, uh, at least the oh. province of Quebec is loving it. What, what about you, Prez? I don't think we were going well, first, at it, were we, Prez? We weren't going at it at all. Yeah, I was just going to say, firstly, we weren't going at it. Secondly, I explained to Andrew two nights ago my distaste, dislike, and uh, outright hatred towards Montreal, and it has nothing to do with the hockey team. Uh, and thirdly, I just want to say right here, right now, why is there a shark? Oh, that's car. Oh, that's a Zamboni. Uh, I just want to say that I was wrong about the Habs flat out. I was wrong about their GM. I was wrong about the team. I was wrong about everything. I, as you see, they were, they were, uh, down two one. Then they put a Toronto Maple Leaf behind their bench. Now they're up three, two. Um, I just, I was wrong and I am blown away by this team. What this team is doing is working their ass off. And when push comes to shove, that is all you can ask as a fan or as a staff member um, just to work your ass off. Uh, I, I Cole Caulfield, Suzuki, Byron, uh, Deneau, I mean, it, it, it's just nonstop skating. They're, they're moving their feet all the time. No one is ever standing still. Uh, it's also interesting that they are a counter-punch hockey team, very reminiscent of the St. Louis Blues a couple of years ago. Uh, this is a team that allows uh, offenses to just cycle and circle and cycle and circle, shoot from outside. They just wait patiently for a uh, miscue, and they attack. Um, it's uh, I, I wish I could cheer for the team because I really love the guys on it. And, and especially Corey Perry, who has always been a guy that I've loved to watch. And at 36 years old, I got to believe this has been the funnest uh, run of his life. And he's a Stanley cup champ. Uh, so hats off to the Montreal Habs and uh, let's move on to a game. I could care less about. I would be lying to you if I didn't say that felt nice to hear, Prez. Wow. And and they have been playing some good hockey. They have been playing some good hockey. I'll just say the thing that I've been saying all year long is that they don't have, you know, superstars, like everybody says, besides Carey Price. But what they do have is four lines that are scoring. And before we get into our next game, I do want to say, follow up on what what uh, the point the Prez just makes. It's a great point. Um, 
they are not a, you know, carry in the puck type of team. They are a dump and chase team to the T. Yep. But the only time they carry it in is when they create a turnover and somebody jumps the rush like Josh Anderson did from a great pass from uh, Koka Niemi. And it's a really good point because a lot of people I've noticed are, are wondering, why are the Habs allowing so many shots from the point? Because their defensemen have scored. But because of that, they're doing a great job of locking down the forwards as well. So although, like Prez said, they are doing a good, you know, they are allowing a lot of time and cycle time for the opposition, it's not really meaningful time. Like with the Montreal Canadiens right now, when you look at the opposition and see how many shots they have, I've talked about this for a couple of days now, and Carmine can attest to this, how many dangerous shots have they had? Like, you know, when, when Vegas beat Montreal in Montreal, the dangerous scoring opportunity stats were actually 13 to 10. All, but they actually had like double the amount of shots than the Montreal Canadiens had. So you're not going to score on Carey Price just floating it into his chest. And, you know, they've really proven that. So, uh, but the job is not done. They got to go back to Montreal. So it's a little bit different and uh, still one win left for them. Andrew, you know, the, the great thing about this series, uh, listen, Vegas played Minnesota. They knew, <clears throat> even though it went seven, they knew what they were getting uh, into with Minnesota. They knew uh, where the threats were. And then eventually they made the adjustments and, and shut down those threats. Against Colorado, they knew after those first couple of games when they had it head home, um, they knew what they had to do. Against this Montreal team, I hate to use this reference because it's a uh, it, it's not meant to, uh, to make the players of Montreal look bad, but... Montreal is like a team of plumbers. They just go out there, and as a unit, it's next man up. Uh, you just don't know which player is going to beat you. Uh, they're playing absolutely great. If you say to someone, name the star of the Montreal uh, team in the playoffs, you can't name one because they're all playing absolutely great hockey right now, and, and, and I'm loving it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sorry, sorry Carm, I'm hearing an echo there a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm here to just dealing with an echo. Yeah, so what I was gonna say was, uh, yeah, Carm, we call uh, the Montreal Canadiens uh, a team of twelve Zach Hymans, and uh, that's really what it is, man. Uh, Brendan Sod, Zach Hyman, Patrick Sharp from yesteryear, just guys that are capable of putting up, you know, fifteen to twenty goals a year. Uh, shut down the opposition, uh, fight dirt, dirty in the bo- uh, at the boards. But I will say one thing. I, uh, Shea Weber is one dirty freaking hockey player, and I, it's not a bad thing. I, I'm not insulting it. Brian Marchant's my favorite hockey player. But yeah. my God, that guy and his stick. It, I mean, last night, did you see uh, top right uh, defensive zone? He cross-checks, which is you know, part of the course, he cross checks every time he breathes, but he cross checks a Vegas guy and literally turns around to look at the ref to see if he got caught. I don't even going back to the leaf series when he cross checked the guy through the face. I don't understand why he's not getting called on all of this stuff. I, I I'm baffled by it. I, I've never I agree with you. It's it's, the, and the, it's press, all the problem game is long. they haven't set the standard. The problem is they haven't set the standard. And that's what happened two games ago. They didn't set the standard. And the first penalty of the game was a, a hooking call that was a super soft playoff call. And yet yes. before that, Montreal had a bunch of cross checks that could have been called. Vegas had a few plays that could have been called, including a punch to the head for Suzuki. That's the problem in the playoffs. The, the referees have to set the standard. Like you said, if they call that, then they're letting the whole teams know this is what we're going to call. This is kind of what we're, this is the line. Don't cross that line, you know, kind of thing. And you, you mentioned, um, you know, some of these guys like Corey Perry. And I just wanted to say that uh, right now we're seeing, I think, a team that has the perfect mix of vets and, and youth. I mean, you have a 20 year old score a goal in the same night we have a 36 year old score a goal. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. The way that Mark Bergevin surrounded his team with wow. young guys like Suzuki and Caulfield, and then also guys like Stahl and Corey Perry, Joel Edmondson, guys that have kind of been there, done that. So 
Um, be interesting to see, though, and also interested to see who the Vegas Golden Knights go to for goaltending because I think it's a, uh, it's a disastrous situation. I'm a Marc-Andre Fleury think, fan, but you should have, have gone to, go to, to Leonard Fleury. last night. You have no, to go to Fleury. Let me, no. let, let me Listen, throw one yeah, more ahead, at you, Press. Let me throw one more. Does this team at all remind you of let's say the 94, 95 New Jersey Devils. They had some scoring on the team, a very good goaltender. Uh, and they beat Boston. They beat Pittsburgh. They beat Pilar, Carm, I was and like, they swept Detroit in the Stanley Cup Finals. Carm, Carm, I was like, the era of growing up, you know those. Carm, you know that era. I was, I was like three years old in 1994. Yeah, right. Okay. I have no I wasn't record. conceived. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Listen, I wasn't, even, I wasn't even in the womb, Carm. Can we get to some yeah. actionable info on this game? You're, you're let's get to, your, to, let's get to I'm, I'm golfing game. today. Yes. I'm golfing today. That's awesome. Prez, I want to golf with you, man. I heard you're, you've been golfing. I, I, I love golf. I've been golfing as well. Uh, I'm terrible. I want to hear about your golfing. I want to hear about your golfing. I, my goal is uh, to break 100. I'm awful. Use the footage. All right. Lightning uh, I, I, minus I, 150. I use. Islanders plus 130. Plus <laughs> one and a half for the Islanders. Too expensive. Minus 220. The minus one and a half, though, is plus 180. Total sits at five. And let's put it this way, guys. Fives have been successful. I talked about it during a lot of the regular season. The stats when you bet a total of five, it seemed to have be either a win or a push. And right now, you're having lots of success if you are betting the over in this series. Yesterday, or last time these two teams played, it took just one team to get the job done. And I want to mention, before I throw it to you guys, the fact that I made a statement last week saying that I thought that in the playoffs in particular, one game to the next, the score of the previous game doesn't really impact it as much. But it's hard to really use that same sentiment when I look at this game. Because they do have great leadership. They do have a great defensive team. The Islanders do. They do have a great coach. But what I was really disappointed with the Islanders, and I wasn't even in on the game, was that they did not really stop the madness. It didn't stop at four. It didn't stop at five. It didn't stop at six. It didn't stop at seven. And to me, that's a worrisome note. You know, if you beat a team 5-1, it's like, you know what? We, you know, we got destroyed, but if you allow a team to score eight goals, it means that it, number one, they mentally got to you. Number two, the other team did not want to slow down. Uh, and number three, you start questioning yourself and saying like, what are we going to do different in the next game? Because if I'm an Islanders guy right now, an Islanders better or an Islanders fan, I'm begging for a low scoring game. I'm begging for it. How many times did Prez on Wager Talk today even get Teddy into knowing about these Islander unders? And all of a sudden, the Islanders started moving really quickly, moving faster and playing in these higher scoring games. And I don't think it's been helping them. They need to get back to kind of that defensive trap mentality as much as I hate using that word trap. My bet on this game, and I'll go to you, Carm, I'm going to keep it simple here and go with the Tampa Bay Lightning team total over two and a half at around minus 110, minus 115. I truly feel like even if they lose this game, they're going to put up three goals, but uh, I can't see them getting absolutely shut down in this game after what I saw. It'll be impressive if the Islanders can do it, but I'm going to go with the flow here and take Tampa on their team total, Carm. Yeah, and, and we just had that stat on the screen. Uh, we talked about it, uh, I think, on the previous show. You know, teams winning uh, or scoring eight goals in uh, in a win and what they've done in the next game and in a playoff series we're talking about. And uh, the eight times uh, following an, an eight goal uh, output, uh, the the team that scored eight, eight goals has won seven of the eight games and the, it stayed under the total five of the eight times it stayed under the total. Um, obviously, uh, it's happened 10 times before. Uh, one of those 10 times, it was the end of the series. So that's why we only have eight games to look at uh, as far as that database goes. But with that said, Andrew, I, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say the same thing I said the other day. I'm going to look at, uh, and you know, I could be completely wrong on this, but I'm going to look at 
the, the same angle. I'm going to look at <clears throat> Tampa Bay to win this game and for this game to stay under the total. It's very tough in an elimination game, Andrew. We've talked about it. You've talked about it. Uh, we tend to see some goals in these elimination games uh, that go over oh. the total. But uh, let's look at that game. I think it's still uh, what happened in that game was an anomaly. Uh, you had a deflection early on that went straight to Stamkos with a half open net. He put it in. Uh, and then a deflection off a defenseman through the goalie's legs for the second goal. And all of a sudden, the Islanders are down uh, 2 nothing in that game early on. And their game plan goes right out the window. And it just escalated from there. They took penalties. Tampa Bay makes you pay for those penalties. Uh, they have to every single team in the playoffs thus far. And it just got out of control. This isn't a series that there should ever be a game between these two that is 8 nothing. Uh, there shouldn't this, there shouldn't be a five nothing between these two teams. So that's an anomaly for me. It's going to go back to uh, you know it, it's back here now. I think it's another tight scoring game. We'll see what the Islanders can do. I think at the end of the day, uh, my only lean can be Tampa Bay to end this series tonight, and uh, hopefully this stays under the total. Press, where are you going here? Well, firstly, I just want to point out uh, that the third goal that Tampa Bay scored was also a deflection off the back of the goaltender twice. So all three goals to start the game were total uh, deflection flukes, um, which is in keeping with my NHL playoffs because I was on the under in that game. Uh, where am I going here, Andrew? Look, I I, I hate this game flat out. Uh you know, I, I'm not going to bet it. I'm telling people that right now. I'm, uh, I'm literally leaning towards the New York Islanders at plus 130. Uh, my take on the play is, um, I think this new, I think these two teams are very even, and I think after an eight nothing drubbing with a coach like Barry Trotz, you know, and that's the interesting thing, right? Where we show a stat on. How many games, how many times a team has won by eight or scored eight and what has happened the next game? I'd like to know how many times a team that Barry Trotz coached got destroyed by eight goals and what did they do the next game? Because I don't care about that statistic. I only care about it in relation to Barry Trotz teams. I think uh, Barry Trotz is going to get this team to focus. I think they're coming home. I think we're going to see a really strong New York Islanders team. I like them in the first period. I do lean on the under, uh, but I'm not betting this game, man. Like, I like I, I tried to get out of this show last night. To be bluntly honest, I was like, I don't even want to do this show. Like, I, I how the but hell you came do you bet anyway. this hockey? Game? You came. How on the anyway. hell do you? Bet? Yeah, well. How the hell do you bet this hockey game? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Dan, what do you like? <laughs> can we can we patch in your audio, Dan? You could always, uh, Prez, you patch could always Danny. ask Viv or you could ask your daughter. You know what I mean? Like, why Well, not? my Look, daughter, my, my daughter is a New York Islander fan because she go. started betting six months ago. Uh, and her first, like, eight wins with the New York Islanders. So she walks in there up 2-1. She's like, yeah, Islanders. Anyway. And that's how a fan uh, was born. Prez, as far as the whole Barry Trotz thing, I, I think it's a good point. And obviously, he's such a great coach. But I think a lot of those points, and, and we saw it with Tampa Bay off a loss. They have a huge skill um, yeah, off a loss or a huge know. history. Yeah, but I think that with Barry Trotz and this Islanders team, you know, off an embarrassment, I'd almost would want to play another team. You know, if it was the regular season and they just lost, you know, this bad to somebody, I don't, and they were I going don't up agree. against somebody else, I would I be like, agree. yep, the Islanders are going to bounce back. But what are you going to change in one day? This is what I've been saying. This is what I've been telling people Andrew, about Vegas Andrew. and Montreal. I you know how many people put Vegas puck line yesterday? And for there's some reason, I have no idea why. Yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing that needs to be changed. Uh, uh, the bounces didn't go their way, and all of what? the bounces didn't go their way. I'm listening to yesterday. I'm listening Sorry. to as I'm driving. I'm listening to sports radio, and um, all I hear is, "Oh, the worst thing that uh, Tampa could have did was run up the score because the Islanders aren't going to forget it." Uh, are you kidding me? This isn't. 
like this isn't regular season thing where yeah. you you lay 10 on a team and then uh, or in football where you put 40 up on a team and next time you play them they remember it there is no revenge factor here yeah this game six of the of the nhl semifinal playoffs you come out that's what i'm saying game, though you played every single okay, game so, yeah. so i will answer that question andrew mcginnis okay and 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 i'll I'll wrap the whole show up because I'll relate it hey, to the Prez? Montreal Canadiens. Press, press, yeah. can I say something? It's McKinnis. There's no G in it. Thanks. Um, oh, I'm thirsty. Everybody says anyway. my name wrong, Carm. Nobody yeah, gets and it everybody, right. It's a mixture everybody of what you said my, and what he said. So everybody gets my name wrong too. Anyway, Andrew, let me give you, let me answer your question, and it's similar to the Montreal Canadiens. The one thing that the Montreal Canadiens has done have done exceptionally throughout the playoffs is score that first goal and the second goal. Montreal, St. Louis Blues, New York Islanders, these teams are counter-punching hockey teams. New York Islanders went down 3 nothing. All three goals were off of deflections. Montreal will struggle to come back from 3-0. The New York Islanders will struggle to come back. The way they play, they can't get over. They, they, you can't count on them to put four goals up and win 4-3. They need to go up, and then they need to play their system, and then they need to shut the other team down. That's the recipe for the Habs. That's the recipe for the Blues when they won. That's the recipe for the New York Islanders. So when you say, what do they have to do differently? They have to not go down 3 nothing off of deflected shots early in the game, and then that takes them out of their system. That's it. That's the bottom line. I mean, if, if Vegas Golden Knights go up 3 nothing tomorrow, you can't be sitting there going, oh, we can come back, we can come back. Yeah, I mean, yes, you can come back, sure. But uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for the Colorado Avalanche to come back from 3 nothing than it is the New York Islanders. Of course, and I've been saying that point all playoffs long. The fact that that's why I think that that's why I made the statement last week that sometimes the scoreboard doesn't dictate how the game actually went because let's look at game one between Vegas and Montreal. If, if Montreal scores a goal in the first period there, that game becomes a whole lot more defensive, a lot less yep. wide open, yep. and things could change. But if you know, if Vegas gets, it's like it's. Like, I made a comparison on the radio to soccer. You could see a nil-nil game in the seventy-fifth minute, and one team scores, and the final score could be three-one, because once that first goal is scored, the game changes. the The openness of the game, you know, it's it's just complete different game. Uh, all I was saying about the Islanders, though, is that if this was the regular oh. season and they just lost that bad to somebody, I would potentially have like a 5% play on them tonight against like the Rangers. But they're not playing the Rangers. They're playing the same team that just beat them down just short days ago, two short days ago. So uh, I have a tough time believing that they can get it together. Even if they do, I just think Tampa Bay might be a little bit too much for them. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with myself. My best bet is going to be just what I said there on my uh, team total, two and a half for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Also, guys, make sure you watch out for those in-game wagers on the overs. Like I've been saying, the third period over one and a half with a game at five as the total. We're going to get some great prices with this. I'm also going to be betting for the game to have an empty net goal. My book offers that anywhere between plus 180, plus 200. Um, I think that if we do see a Tampa Bay victory, we will see an empty net goal in the game tonight. Uh, just simple for me for tonight, guys. You guys have my hockey play. I have a 4% play up in the MLB. And I am joining Drew Martin and mid-major Matt today on my debut on the first pitch show uh, right here on Wager Talk TV. So check me out on that show. Prez, I'll start with you for uh, your best bet and what you have going on today. Uh, as of now, I have no plays up for my clients. I have been uh, heating up. I've won uh, my last five days in a row on betting. Uh, that hasn't helped my NHL season much, but uh, my NHL playoffs. But uh, my NBA four and one run, my uh, baseball seven and two run. Uh, but right now, I have no plays for tonight. I will be doing uh, some research right after Wager Talk today. 
Uh, also on Wager Talk today, which is up in half an hour on this uh, channel, we have uh, Tony Mejia, Carmine, and Arthur De Caesar. Uh, my best bet for the show, I am not betting. Uh, I'm not betting anything to do with this hockey game. I actually will not be watching this hockey game. Uh, I have had it. I need a freaking break. Uh, but my best bet, do it, do with it what you want, is the New York Islanders uh, to win the game. There you go. Done. Get me out of here. I'm having a great hair day. All right, guys, you guys can check out uh, Prez on Wager Talk today following this show, 12 o'clock Eastern time. Carm, what do you have going on today? Yeah, uh, 5% play up uh, today in Euro action. Uh, goes off uh, soon, a half hour. Uh, you can pick up at wagertalk.com. Uh, a couple other plays are all client plays. Um, no play up uh, in hockey because I literally just told you guys what I'm going to take. With that said, um, you we hit the Monday best bet with the uh, power play points for Hedman, uh, and then we threw a hook into the uh, into the water yesterday, and we came up with a rubber shoe on a losing pick there. So let's try and get it a winner. I'm going to go with the power play points again. If uh, the Isles pick up any uh, penalties today, uh, Tampa is going to make them pay for it. I'm going to take uh, the big man Stamkos. Uh, to get at least a point on the power play plus 140. That'll be my uh, show best bet. Carm, you have been money on these power play points. Uh, you definitely know how to run a power play. And like I've been saying, uh, you could possibly get a job with the Vegas Golden Knights deciding who they're going <laughs> to score. And maybe if you did that, it would help them out they a little bit scoring. as well. Make sure you guys check out Carmine's 5% play today in Euro soccer. It starts very, very soon. Head to his website, wt.buzz slash CB, and check him out. Uh, he has been undefeated this week so far on Wager Talk Today picks and uh, looking to deliver with a 5% play today. Carmine with Stamkos, over a half power play point plus 140. I have the Lightning team total over two and a half, and Prez with the Islanders plus 130 on behalf of carmine prez i am andrew and we'll see you guys tomorrow with the wager talk one day power pass you receive every play from every betting consultant for one day at the ridiculously discounted price of just 199 what's better than one day of great games watching following and winning those games Get your sportsbook edge with the entire Wager Talk team of handicappers with this one day power pass. Every Wager Talk expert in every game they release for just one day. Your Wager Talk one day power pass is right here and it's yours for just $1.99.